I know this is a turn in mood from the previous video I made, but I felt like I needed to tone down the mood and put something else out for the people finding me from that one. In a previous video, I talked about an analog horror series by the name of Urban Spook. Uh, that's the channel, by the way. The series itself is actually called The Painter, which was pretty horrendous. At, at least with The Painter, though, there was talent in the art being shown, and the music that eerily plays in the background of each video. But, how does someone make an analog horror so tasteless that it is subject to near universal backlash, to the point that the creator deletes their whole presence? Well, a horror creator crossed the line to quite a few people with the making of their video, 606-2006, Nickelodeon Hijacking Incident, which is an analog horror take on Spongebob. The video starts with a clip of Spongebob Squarepants Season 2, Episode 22A, Something Smells, a very popular episode of the series in which Spongebob eats something a little smelly, which ruins his breath and makes everyone averted to him. The fable goes that while this episode was playing on the 6th of June 2006, Nickelodeon was subject to quite a peculiar hijacking. I will say props to the creator because the Nickelodeon schedule for that day did actually have that episode playing at 8pm, so at least they did their homework in that department. Through the VHS filters that have been overlaid on top of the episode, we are shown the scene where Spongebob breaks a mirror with his bad breath and is convinced that he is ugly. During Spongebob's oh no, the feed starts glitching out. We are then met with a screen that is very typical of analog horror. Fire in the background, Spongebob melting, and not without some of analog horror's favorite. Those eyes that everyone loves to use to invoke that flight or fight reaction. But what's the significance of this screen? Sure, it's off-putting if I'm ten years old, but is there a reason why Spongebob is suffering such torment? The feed of the episode cuts off and the program cuts to a picture of a small river. Spongebob experiencing gruesome torment, juxtaposed with the serene picture of a river. An interesting choice for sure. The channel then cuts to the card it would play as if the episode had just ended, and the channel was transitioning to another episode. But this scene is where all the lore comes out. Steven, why would you murder me? Steven, I thought we were husband and wife. Stephen, your behavior was normal at the time when we were together. Stephen, why did you kill me? Stephen, please tell me why. And that would be all the interjections that would be made where text is meant to go. I'll just give you the next scene, and I will be warning you guys, a seizure warning, in case you need to skip that, I'll give you a couple seconds to go to the timestamp on screen to, to skip that thing. Sunday at 7. Hey, Nick. If you had to skip that clip, you really didn't miss much. The word why just flashes on screen very quickly, which could induce seizures for some people. But this scene further cements the question of why, and it seems like someone named Stephen killed his wife, and now the apparitions of his wife are taking form in the hijacking of Nickelodeon. The text on screen during the transition card pretty much gave all the lore for us, but who is Steven? Well, after the seizure-inducing scene, the feed fades out and we are met with a screen that would be the subject of a lot of controversy. We have this screen, which is an edit of the created by Steven Hillenburg screen, but more maliciously manipulated to say, see you in hell, Steven Hillenburg, with rather mismatched fonts. The video feed fades back to the Nickelodeon logo, and then to black, and we are met with the maintenance screen, which brings an end to this short analog horror piece. From this, there seems to be a bit of pretty obvious lore, and then I'll sprinkle in a bit of my own analysis, which you're free to agree or disagree with. The date this happened in lore is June 6, 2006, 
the 666 day, which everyone seems to love using for their horror. This video follows the wife of Stephen, who is haunting Nickelodeon and trying to reach out to him via the TV channel. But why Nickelodeon? Well, because see you in hell Stephen Hillenburg alludes to the idea that it was Stephen Hillenburg himself who killed his wife. Stephen Hillenburg being the creator of Spongebob for those uncultured. It makes sense that of all places to haunt this man it would be in his own creation. But even then, why the cursed Spongebob? Why the river? Well, my theory around these two elements is that the Spongebob is being used as a way to scare Stephen and show him that that is his upcoming fate for what he's done. The river might be my biggest stretch in an attempt to tie everything together. I theorize that this is the river where Stephen Hillenburg left his wife after he killed her, or that he just killed her there. It may be a bit of a reach, but this is honestly assuming the creator made this with an overlying narrative on top. It's entirely possible that the scary Spongebob and River were just put there to be eerie. And I wouldn't know for sure because the reception of this video caused the creator to wipe everything. So even if I wanted to, I couldn't reach out for comment. The creator of Spongebob, Steven Hillenburg, died of ALS or Lou Gehrig's disease on November 26, 2018. This death predates the making of this analog horror video whose posting date I can't find to the exact point, but it's safe to assume it was made after 2018 because analog horror and, you know, it's a very new genre. The narrative being written around the idea that a deceased and beloved children's animator had murdered his wife left a bad taste in people's mouths. This is just in poor taste, man, and extremely fucking disrespectful. I hate analog horror and its creators. How tasteless do you have to be to make this shit? This user, of course, elaborated on this claim before anyone here gets defensive about liking analog horror. Glad I always mute before I tweet. Anyways, I was mostly exaggerating when I said I hate analog horror and its creators. I myself am into the Walton Files. I was generally not in the best mood when making this tweet. What I was trying to say was that the analog horror community has a tad issue where the most creators tend to use real deceased people in their videos. I am not primarily saying every single one of them do this, I as a fan can at least acknowledge that a lot of videos and their creators are not very good. According to the in-universe lore, this was before Steven Hillenburg died, which I mean it is unironically a defense that people who like this video would make, but obviously that this didn't happen and the video reeks of someone trying to use the shocking nature of spousal murder and combining it with a beloved figure to try to invoke a reaction. The creator, as you can see, got a reaction, but not one of fear, but of hatred. The intense backlash led to the creator taking his video off of YouTube, along with deleting his entire channel, with his Twitter and Instagram as well. I don't know how I feel about the man being chased off of all his platforms just for making a bad video. I think that it wasn't good and it was pretty tasteless to besmirch the name of Steven Hillenburg for extra shock points. Mass harassment though just isn't the answer. I don't want to overstep my case here. I do think that if you would really need to besmirch the name of someone who is well beloved and dead in order to get a reaction, I don't think you had a great idea to begin with. At least this guy just took his stuff down and let people be mad at him unlike a certain other analog horror creator. It's also good he didn't do a slime beast either and be like, it's bad on purpose guys, you can't criticize it now. Another supposed lost episode of Spongebob that had a certain gripe against Stephen Hillenburg was that of the episode Void Descendants, which according to the in-universe lore was aired on May 6, 2004. This one is not released on the Devil Day, which already puts it at a higher plane than the 666 video, but don't be mistaken, the video in its advantage with the date it gets much worse with the contents. The episode opens with the title card with the title Void Descendants on it, with a black background except for a ultra hyper realistic eye where the O in Void should be. The music playing in the background seems to be a bunch of random notes that would not be heard in a Spongebob title card, or any episode of the show at all. 
the music is interrupted by static, as the credits in Morse code fade in as they would for any Spongebob episode. I will of course be translating the Morse code into English for you guys. Storyboard Directors Zalgo Written by Stephen will see one of them. I must admit that I'm not the greatest creepypasta nut in the bunch, so when I saw the word Zalgo, I thought it would be some anti-Christ symbolism or something similarly edgy. I guess I underestimated the might of the creator of this video, because apparently Zalgo is a creepypasta cryptid who can make people insane and destroy the world. I'm not sure if I appreciate this more or less than if he had just put Satan or something like that. I'll also admit that the word C in the written by credit is obscured by the giant date plastered on the screen, so I can't say for sure that that's what the word is. But with the information given, that's the only word that makes sense that ends in EE -E in the place of that sentence. Creative Director Join us Animation Director Die Like Us Supervising Producer Steven your death will come one day. On one hand, I like the effort it takes to just slap your creepy messages into an online Morse code translator and put those instead of the text in plain English. On the other hand, it means more effort for me to dissect the video for messages that I'm sure we can all agree are just there to try and shock the audience. The episode begins with a slideshow of images and some AI voiceovers to go with the pictures. I'll just play the 30 second AI slop fest because to summarize doesn't do justice to how unintentionally funny this video is. Patrick, can you give me a shovel? Sure. Here you go. One minute later. SpongeBob, have you found something? A few minutes later. Have, have you, you found, found the, the treasure, treasure yet? yet? One eternity later. I found the treasure! Everyone, hurry! Jonas! Where's my arm? Jonas! I came to your job! Why don't you join me? For some reason, Spongebob becomes demonic, evil, dark Spongebob and murders the rest of the cast. The Mr. Krabs scene playing audio of the supposed killing of Mr. Krabs, which if anything just reminds me of a certain YouTube poop edit of that one Christmas episode. The difference though is that edit is being played for laughs. The murder scenes end though, and as if we couldn't just have our dead beloved children's show characters, we're hit with the screen of a silhouette staring blankly at us with the iconic analog horror eyes. The picture is accompanied with text that says, Your death will come, Stephen. We will pick you up in 11-26-2018. Grammatically incorrect, but that aside, November 26, 2018 is the exact day that Stephen Hillenburg would pass away. Yes, this video was obviously made after Hillenburg died. And this is another example of a creator who has a very shallow idea of what scares people, and so they just throw in the death of a children's animator. With that being said, the credits play with no edits made to the names. Some VHS glitching just occurs in a bid to scare us. If the glitching wasn't spooky enough, the ending credits song is also playing in reverse. This goes on for a good 50 seconds until the credits stutter out, and we're met with the same face that was mean mugging Stephen Hillenburg. I want to say that the text says United Plankton Pictures Incorporated, but in all honesty, United is the only word I can see in that obscured word, and I could entirely be wrong on that. The Nicktoons logo flashes on screen with a red splash behind it, and it is mirrored along the vertical axis. Below it is some spooky corrupted text that could contain some creepy messaging, but I'm not well versed enough in the creepypasta lore to catch any specific references. It just looks like ordinary trademark disclaimer text to me. Void Descendants is somehow even worse than the 606-2006 Nickelodeon hijacking incident. 
There's not even any analysis I can do for this one except painstakingly translating Morse code. There's no lore, it's just edge. Hey, look, this real guy died. Wouldn't it be scary if creepy demons invaded the TV show episode and predicted his death 14 years in advance? With, with the other video, at least there was some room for interpretation with the scary Spongebob and the river. This is just Spongebob killing his friends. Also, look at the date Steven Hillenburg died. And also, have this reference to another creepypasta, because why not, I guess? Every day, it gets harder to be an analog horror fan, because people make stuff like this. And people just keep on making a mockery out of the entire genre. The entire genre really started out as a whole take on the feeling that you would get if, say, you woke up in the middle of the night to an emergency alert and something ultra scary was happening. But instead, it's just turned into AI-generated slop fests where we just desecrate the grave of beloved people from our childhoods. Some people make the argument that analog horror is ruined, and I can't say that they're entirely wrong on that. My data could of course just be biased though. I also found this video from the same Twitter thread that was talking about uh, the 666 Spongebob incident and talking about how bad of an execution that was. So maybe my Spongebob analog horror takes are being biased by the fact that I'm sourcing them from this one Twitter thread. This Twitter thread did bring up something very interesting. There was apparently another supposed Spongebob hijacking analog horror video that featured a billboard with a decapitated child, which is pretty obviously fake, but I'm still being wary of showing it because I have no clue what YouTube's guidelines are on this stuff anymore. Like my last video about Peter Scully, I didn't show anything or anything like that and I had to re-edit it a couple times because it kept getting struck down. But that aside, this is on a different plane. This is just edge with no purpose. At least with the 666 video, there was like a narrative there. What kind of narrative requires you to make an image of a kid's head cut off? It's not real, but it's seriously just a question of why. But hey, it's not like I'm a closed-minded person. If you want to talk to me about the ethics of putting stuff like that in analog horror, and especially of real people, I'd be willing to discuss. I can have a live stream and we can talk over Discord and it'll be fun, I think. As long as we have a good faith conversation about it, after all, it doesn't need to be blood sports or anything. But yeah, I wanted to make a video that was more light in nature and more similar to the Urban Spook video, not because of views or anything, but because it's just something that I don't have to get, like, extremely upset about. I think talking about analog horror is a good blend of disturbing when it is disturbing and also just safe because you don't have to discuss real things happening to real people though i will warn you the next thing i will be talking about is not very great some of you might have to end up skipping that one but anyway yeah i have been john x woodcat and this has been the 666 spongebob nickelodeon hijacking incident or whatever the hell i'm gonna title this video i'll see you in the next one